Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to do something a little different. I have a, a little simple commission uh, to mount this Harley sign onto a piece of wood. Uh, the sign is a bit flimsy, so mounting it to something will stiffen it up and also maybe give, give it a little bit of a nicer look with a border. Uh, and no, I'm not a Harley Davidson rider, but I certainly know someone who is. And I'm going to use this large 18 inch platter blank that I've had kicking around, haven't really had another use for it. So it's going to look something like this. Let's see how it looks when I'm done. There were two holes already in this sign, but uh, I think I needed two more on the side. So I'm going to have four holes all together to hold it down. I find a compass is the easiest way to find center on these large pieces like this. And for this blank, I'm just going to use a face plate to uh, to mount it onto my lathe. I always pre-drill my blanks before I put the screws in. That way I hopefully will never break a screw in the wood. The first order of business is to just true up the outside diameter. Here I'm just using a half inch bowl gouge and just using a push cut along the outer diameter. The piece is quite warped, so I'm just going to face off the, uh, the, the flange side of the piece. I'm just using a pull cut here to flatten off the front face, and that way I'll know how much thickness I have to work with. And now I'm using that same pull cut on the uh, on this face here, which this is actually going to be the back of the sign. Initially, now I've flattened this face fairly well, but I actually want to make it a bit concave so that when it's hanging against the wall, just the outer edges touch. So now I'm going to use just a push cut here, and this is just a roughing cut. And next I'll switch to a sharper tool with uh, a bowl gouge with more like a 45, 40 to 45 degree angle on it. So this gives me a cleaner finish. I'm just traversing nice and slow. And uh, yeah, get a good fine finish here. I'm going to use this large chuck with dovetail jaws 
to mount the piece. And I'll just mark, out, mark off the diameter for the size of the mortise required for the dovetail. I find it easier to make these cuts on the other side of the lathe and it's handy because my, lathe's, my lathe is sitting in the middle of the room. So rather than reach over the bed, I just switch over to the other side of the lathe and make these cuts. I'm just finalizing the dovetail shape here with uh, just a small skew laid flat on its side. The back of the sign is now fully finished so I can sand it. I'm going to sand this uh, dovetail area with my normal power sander, but I'm going to just do the outside rim with an orbital sander. It's just as easy. Now that the sanding's all complete, I can remount this and uh, just put it right on the chuck using that dovetail mortise I created. And now I'll work on the front of the sign. At this point, I'm just aiming for a relatively flat surface all the way across. And I don't want this to be too thick, otherwise it'll be too heavy for hanging on a wall. So I'm probably aiming towards a half to five eighths inch thick. But within the recess area that I'm going to create, it'll be thinner again. Now I'm just going to mark where the sign, where the Harley sign is going to fit onto this piece. I want to recess it just a little bit, just so that uh, it looks a little more interesting. I think if it stuck out, it just wouldn't have a good look. So I'm going to recess it in a little bit. And also the groove helps capture the sign a little bit to move, it prevents it from moving sideways. This parting tool is creating a bit of chatter in the piece and it's probably because the, uh, the overall piece is relatively thin now, but it's doing the job so it'll be fine. I fiddled with this quite a bit until I got it just sitting in there perfectly. The outside rim looked a bit plain just being flat, 
So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bead shape. It just looks a little more interesting than just a flat shape out there. And I'll clean up any little lines on this bead with uh, a negative rake scraper. You'll notice I have my respirator on for sanding and I also have my dust collector chute there with my dust collector going. It's really important to keep the dust out of your lungs. Well, this fits really well and looks pretty good. But now I'm going to determine which way to orient the sign relative to the grain. I don't want the grain in the wood sort of trying to fight the look of the sign. So I tried it a few times until I got something I liked. And then I'm just going to mark it and pre-drill the, uh, the holes for mounting the sign. I'm also pre-drilling the back for these little hanging fixtures and I'm going to uh, again just pre-drill where those little fixtures sit. With everything screwed down, uh, I think it looks not too bad. It, it's taken the warped sign and flattened it a bit, and I think I think that looks good enough with the four screws. So I'm just going to simply finish the outside surface in the back with wipe-on polyurethane. The final steps are to uh, mount the hardware for the for hanging the sign, and I use a nice uh, plastic coated wire that you can uh, that you can use for hanging large heavy pictures. So this is really handy. I use it for my wall pieces as well. The finish had dried for a few days before I mounted the hardware and, and, uh, and mounted the sign. So now the screws are just going back in and this is, this is it. The project's finished. Stay tuned for some close-up pictures. Thanks for watching.